I have a slightly different setup here than normal because today I wanted to give a little tutorial on how to safely package and send Disney pin mail. I love to send and receive Disney pin mail, whether that be through trading or buying or selling, but a key component of that is knowing how to properly package your pins and also knowing the best way to ship them. So today I wanted to go over the basic materials that you need to package and send your pins, go over the technique of how you can package your pins, and then also talk about the way that I ship all of my pins. So I wanted to start off right away by saying that you should never, ever, ever, ever try to mail your pins in a paper envelope like this or a paper envelope of any size. If you try to send your pins in just a paper envelope like this, these envelopes are designed to go through mail sorters. So anything in there that's sticking out like a pin or a pin back, it's going to get ripped off and your letter will arrive with nothing inside. So if you try to send a pin using just a paper envelope, you will in fact end up sending empty air. What you want to use instead for all pin mail are bubble mailers. These are the mailers that are lined with the bubble wrap in size and they come in tons of different shapes and sizes and also in different fun colors as well. I ordered a bunch of these off of Amazon for pretty cheap, but if you need single ones, I find that stores like Walmart and CVS will always stock them too. So you can use new fresh bubble mailers, which I like to do when I have them, but I find it's also really good if you're trading a lot to reuse some bubble mailers. So this is a bubble mailer that I get from my Theme Park Monthly Pin subscription. I think it's nice because it's a pretty teal color. And when I open it, I'm just careful that I cut close to where it's sealed so there's enough of a little bit of a flap and that when I want to resend it, you just retape it down really good and that way you don't have to always be buying new bubble mailers, you can use the ones that you already have. Okay, so we've now gone over the fact of that you have to use bubble mailers to send your pins, but you also need to wrap those pins that are inside the bubble mailer in bubble wrap. You never just want to put a loose pin with nothing else in them in a bubble mailer because you never know what the USPS might do. Things can easily get crushed in shipping and you wanna make sure that your pin is as protected as possible. I have some of my own pins here that I'm gonna wrap up and pretend like I would be mailing them out to show the best way to make sure your pins are totally protected. So let's pretend that I am just mailing this pin out in a trade. I'm gonna wanna cut off a little bit of bubble wrap from this large sheet that I have until it is about this size. Now, the most fragile part of a pin is the pin post. This pin post is what you wanna be sure doesn't bend at all during shipping because if it does bend, then it has a really high probability of snapping off. So this is how I wrap my pins to ensure that the posts and the pins themselves are really secure. I take my pin and I stick it through the bubble wrap here and then stick the Mickey head back like that. Then I fold this other side over the front so we have a little bit of a double layer of bubble wrap. And then so we have the back fully protected, you're just gonna wrap, wrap, and wrap. So you can see there's quite a few layers of bubble wrap on that and the pin post is totally protected. And then I just take a little bit of tape to help hold this down. So this is what you would do if you're just sending off one pin. If you're mailing off a pin that is still on its backer card, you do get a little bit more protection to the pin posts with the backer card, but you still wanna make sure that there's a lot of protection here. Another thing you wanna ensure with this is that your bubble wrap extends beyond the edges of the card because otherwise the card will oftentimes get really dented and can get crushed in shipping. And to some people that's not a super big deal, but to others they do like to keep their cards in nicer conditions. So I would get a piece of bubble wrap that's about yay big for this pin. And then I would wrap it around the pin like so, starting with the bubble wrap by the pin posts and then just folding it along and down until you have all those nice layers of bubble wrap carefully protecting your pin. 
And as you can see, there's a lot of extra bubble wrap that extends beyond the edges of the card. So that way there's less of a chance of the card itself getting really smushed and damaged. And like the other one, I'm just gonna add a little bit of packing tape here, here, and here to help secure it down. And this is now a pin on card that is ready to ship. But say you have more than one pin that you wanna ship. You don't have to wrap them all individually in their own wrappers like this. You can do, but, but that'll probably waste a bit of bubble wrap. Instead, you can put all of these guys on one line of bubble wrap and then fold it up like this guy. So for these three pins, I might take some bubble wrap that's about this size. And then like with just the single pin, I'm gonna take all of these pins and then stick them through the bubble wrap at the base there. So you have one pin there, then put the second pin in the middle, and then stick the third pin on the edge. And then with these three pins here, you're just gonna flip it up and keep rolling the bubble wrap over. And then for this little guy, just tape it down there and on the sides. And so when you're wrapping multiple pins like this, I would recommend doing no more than five pins in one roll. If you have more than five pins, I'd recommend it doing multiple rolls. But so we're gonna pretend that we're mailing this set of pins off in a trade, and then we're mailing this set of pins off in another trade, and we're gonna put them in our bubble mailers. So when I'm mailing an actual trade, what I also like to do is just write on a little sticker or piece of paper, uh, thanks for trading with me, and then my name, Emily, so that they know who it's coming from. And if it's something that I am selling, I will always wrap the invoice around that pin. And then the paper also, especially if you kind of put it on the back by the pin post, that's another layer of protection. And new bubble mailers like this are nice because this is just a little pull tab sticky where you pull it off and then it'll stick down totally flat and you won't need any extra tape to tape it down. But sometimes it's nice to put a little bit of tape on the sides just to be sure, but normally these guys are good. Now for one that's already used, this one has already used up its sticky thing to hold it down. So with this, all you need to do with your packing tape is very carefully and thoroughly tape all along and around here so that that is totally secured and looks flush. Okay, for this next step, a kitchen scale is super helpful and I highly recommend getting one if you're gonna be mailing out a lot of pins. I'm pretty sure this kitchen scale I got on Amazon for maybe seven bucks. It may have even been cheaper than that so you can find them really inexpensively. But this is so that you can know the weight of your pins because the postage depends on the weight. So we're gonna weigh out this package and see what it comes to. So this package here is weighing in at 1.27 ounces. And this is the one that had the three pins inside. And then this package here, which has the one pin on card and the one loose one is weighing in at 1.83 ounces. So the reason why we had to weigh out our packages is because we're going to use PayPal to create shipping labels for them. Recently, the post office just really increased their prices for sending mail like this but the prices on PayPal and shipping through eBay did not increase. So even initially you had a savings when you chose to ship on PayPal, but now you have a far greater savings if you ship on PayPal. And it's also super easy to create your labels on there. So the first thing that you want to do is log on to your PayPal account. And it's really easy to make a PayPal account if you haven't before. And then you want to go to the web address paypal.com slash ship now. And so this is where you're going to be able to create your shipping address. So you're going to input the address that you're shipping to. And then for shipping information, you're going to select first class mail parcel service two to five days. You can have it either as a large package or package slash thick envelope. I typically do it as the package slash thick envelope since what it is is pretty much a package slash thick envelope. And this is the part where you're going to input the weight that you measured. So ours measured slightly under two ounces, but the prices are the same for mailing between one to four ounces. So I typically just always to be safe, put things in at four. 
things automatically come with tracking. You can add signature confirmation and insurance if you want. You can select the date that you're going to mail, and then you can calculate your shipping cost, and then it will show you the cost of your shipping. So generally, when you're shipping pins, they'll either be four ounces and under. So when you do that on PayPal, it will always be $2.61. Previously at the post office, the same rate was $2.67. So you had a little bit of savings on PayPal, but now the post office increased their rates a ton so that if you were to mail a package of this size, it would be $3 there. So basically you get a 40 cent saving every time you do this through PayPal. And then all you have to do is press confirm and pay and then it will let you print off your postage which you can then tape on to your package and then drop off at the post office, already paid. I still oftentimes like to drop this off at the post office desk so that I can get an actual receipt that it has been dropped off and received by them. So this was just my little tutorial on how to best package and ship Disney pins for pin mail. I like to trade pins. I don't trade too often just because it's difficult for me to afford to have a lot of traders at any time. But if you are interested in trading and trying out your pin mail skills, I'll list my pin picks in the description where you can see what pins I do have available. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please do consider subscribing if you'd like to see more Disney and pin related content. And I hope you have a zippity-doo Disney day.